Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Kind of start with uh, what we did last week. We uh, were able to get a number of guys back, and so we kind of went back to fall camp mode, uh, worked Kansas State versus Kansas State uh, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. We had four good days of just um, good on good and, and worked in young guys and, and just working on our schemes and our system to try to continue to improve. We lost so much time with a number of players um, due to a variety of issues that we had that everybody's dealing with in August. And so we went back, uh, kind of back to the basics uh, for the last week. And now we'll turn our attention to obviously an extremely talented Oklahoma team. They have one game uh, on their ledger. So we didn't feel like we needed to spend all week because um, we need to get better as, as Kansas State, as our team with all our fundamentals and techniques. So uh, we know it's going to be a, a tremendous challenge down in Norman. Um, and uh, um, we're hopeful that uh, we continue to get some guys back that potentially could, could help us. Every day is a, a different uh, animal on that because you don't know from one day to the next who's going to be out at practice. But uh, uh, the guys that are out there yesterday, for uh, example, just really worked hard and, and are excited about the opportunity. Get started with Scott Fritchen. Hey, hey, Chris, uh, you indicated yesterday that you've been short on bodies. Exactly how close is this team to crossing that threshold to where you can't play a game on Saturday? And what kind of anxiety has that caused you this week? Um, well, it causes us anxiety every day, Scott, to be honest with you. I mean, even on the Arkansas State game, it was Friday at 5 o'clock where we finally got the go-ahead to play because we were one one player at one position from having to cancel that game. And we're not the only ones. There's a lot of people. Obviously, Baylor's going through it. And this week, it's another position that we're really close on the on the threshold. And, and we just got to keep uh, – keep preaching to the guys uh, to keep their social distance, keep their mask on, to keep themselves safe so that uh, we can get through the test on Wednesday and get the t through the test on Friday. Um, but in the meantime, the guys that are out there, we have to keep rolling. And, and you may be the backup, but the backup knows that he's one day away from being the starter. The third team guy's one day away from being the starter. So um, it's, it's stressful. It's anxiety, but everybody's dealing with it. And the other thing is uh... – K-State typically is not this big of an underdog. Oklahoma is favored by 28 points. I'm just curious your response to that point spread and also just that us against the world mentality that your guys can adapt and bring in the Norman. I wasn't aware. I don't pay attention to a lot of the, the point spread things, but uh, they're a really good football team. And, and we, after one game, showed that we have a long ways to go. So that makes sense to me. Uh, um, you know, it's still, you got to line up and play and, and uh, um, you know, we have to not worry about who the opponent is and we know who it is and more focus on us getting better uh, at all areas, offensively and defensively. Thanks so much. Good luck. Lynn Harrington. Was it a blessing or does it disrupt kind of your rhythm? You just get started, you play a game, and then you have a week off, and now you're getting ready to play. I know this has been the weirdest season, the weirdest lead up to a season, but does it seem like you just get started and you have to stop? Or because of all of the different things going on with testing and that, maybe it worked out for your good? It's a great question. We just uh, kind of go day by day. Um, you, you would like to get a, a routine and, and knock on wood, we can get into a routine with three games in a row now uh, so that uh, our guys can get in the routine of what happens on a Monday and, and, and rolling through and then getting the soreness out on Sunday and getting ready to play again. Um, that's the hope for everybody across college football that you can get some games uh, strung together. Um, but it's also the reality that uh, even if you are able to play uh, those games, you're going to be playing them with different people or moving guys positionally. And that's just kind of the world we're in right now. And I think all of us coaches now have kind of accepted it. I, I was one that in August, like, ah, oh, shoot, we lost that kid for 14 days or that kid's going into isolation. Now it's more of, 
Okay, that's the hand we're dealt. Yeah, who can we move over? Who can we move positions to? Go ahead, Lynn Harrington. I think we're having a bad connection there, Lynn. So let's go on to Kellis. Hey, Coach. Um, how is Skylar Thompson feeling this week? Is he back at 100% health after uh, being limited a little bit last week? Uh, he didn't do anything last week other than rehab and things. Uh, he did practice yesterday, and uh, I thought he felt really good. So I'm confident with a week of practice um, that uh, he'll be at full strength for Saturday. Um, given that you were dinged up at defensive back last week, have you looked into moving guys over that position or trying some new people out just to give you some depth there? Oh, yeah. We're moving guys all the time, and that's what we did last week. You know, from trying true freshmen to moving safeties to corners, corners to safeties, wide receivers to defensive back, and uh, everything. We, uh, But we also need to prepare for – uh, kids being able to learn and play multiple positions because you just don't know what could happen to you on a Wednesday or a Friday if, if a test doesn't go your way that uh, um, you at least have some familiarity with a number of players playing different spots. And what, one more for you. Where would you say that Oklahoma victory last year ranks, you know, in, in all the big wins you've had through the years at, at all the schools you've coached? Uh, it was obviously a, a big win because it was a home win. It was on homecoming and those things. But, um, you know, I, I just I, – I guess I don't ever really look at that uh, as far as where it ranks. I don't ever, I don't have a, a tally on my wall or anything of, of where things are at um, and uh, kind of just play it year by year and game by game. Adam Meyer. Coach, Justin Hughes, he was – Dusting off some rust coming into the season, and he got six tackles for him against Arkansas State. And what you've seen from him in practice since then, just what would you say you expect to see from him now that you're going into conference play? Oh, just to continue to improve, continue to get more healthy, continue to get his knees stronger, um, continue to just play the game at football speed that Justin wants to play at. Everybody knows what a terrific player he was pre injury. And I think there's a lot of pressure on a young man himself to say, I have to get back to that. Uh, and, and it takes some time. And that's the thing that's difficult is it doesn't happen overnight. It didn't happen with Eli last year when he came off his knee injury. I thought Eli got stronger as the season went on. And, and that's what we're hopeful with, with Justin as well. And Harry Trotter, he can make a big impact on the team. He – stepped up and got that big touch on the fourth quarter to tie the game. Just how much do you expect to him to make, continue to make an impact now? Yeah, I hear he's doing a great job like I knew he would be. He's, he just does everything for us. He catches the ball out of the back, he protects, he runs the ball. He's on special teams. Uh, we're really fortunate to have Harry uh, on the team. And he's an unselfish guy as well. He just wants to help the team, whether he's carrying the ball uh, 15 to 18 times, whether he's carrying the ball 10 times, catching a couple passes, helping us out on kickoff. Um, you love those type of players because it's it's uh, more about uh, the team than it is themselves. Let's go to uh, John Kurtz. Hey, Chris, I mentioned yesterday on the teleconference that you've been trying to work in some freshmen, some more so that the guys that can give you 10 to 15 snaps. Have there been any guys that have stood out in that regard to you so far? Um, Keon Mosey has done some really nice things. Uh, he's getting some more reps. Uh, and he's the one that jumps out at me um, right now. T. Denson uh, is a guy that uh, we're looking at to give us some some – special teams or backup reps or whatever you may may call it. But, uh, you know, the one thing that we did last week is we had a, a, a couple of periods every day where just the young players played against the young players just with our base offense and base defense. And and as you get into the season, sometimes you, you kind of, you know, kind of scale back on that stuff. We're going to go the same thing uh, for the foreseeable future on Tuesdays when we have full pads is to let those young players – go against each other uh, for 10 or 12, 15, 20 plays a day uh, just so that they continue to get comfortable and confident in the scheme 
as well as us seeing guys to say, okay, he is ready to help us, especially during COVID where you might lose a, a few guys at a position. I know you'd also mentioned last week um, that you had some meetings at the beginning of the week as opposed to practicing. Looking back on it now a week later, how productive do you feel like that was? For you? I think they were productive, but um, I mean, that the meetings we were, that we had weren't all dealing with what's going to happen on the field and the scoreboard and stuff. Some of the things in, on the inner workings of our program, we wanted to continue to improve upon, um, be better, be better at challenge the guys, uh, making sure the guys hold each other accountable to the standard that we uh, expect working on discipline, uh, maturity, all, all sorts of things that, you know, just don't happen overnight. Um, and uh, so and you got to realize we lost four or five months of a lot of time with coaches and players together and you lose that much time you know you don't just make up for it in in a quick summer camp or fall especially when so many guys miss it, it's going to take a a lot of teams a while to recover from the amount of time that they lost I'm not saying on the field that's a no-brainer I'm saying off the field as well thanks Chris you bet Sully yeah, hey, Coach. Um, just kind of looking back towards last year, obviously the marquee win at Oklahoma. Going forward to this year, does, do you think that's a, a big point of confidence for the guys that played in that game, think that, you know, we should be right there on the same level with them and kind of allows them, even though it's on the road this time, to have a lot of confidence going into this one? Well, I think the guys that played uh, obviously should have some confidence that, that uh, they competed uh, really well against a, a great football team. The younger guys – they just need to continue to get better at their craft and understanding what we're doing with Kansas State offense, defense, and teams. But uh, both teams are brand new. They have a new quarterback. Uh, you know, we have a lot of new offensive linemen and some new guys on defense. And so the teams are totally different. But uh, the guys that played in the game, I hope, you know, have some confidence to say, you know, we had some success. Yeah, and speaking of their quarterback, what after watching him play, you know, one game at the college level, what did you kind of see from him so far? And, and what have you guys, what have you been telling the guys about him and what to prepare for? Well, we have limited film, uh, but just the fact that he's working under Lincoln Riley, you know, he's going to be a, a great player because Lincoln is as good as there is at coaching quarterbacks. And so I think he has a tremendous arm strength. I think he does a great job of, of reading defenses, looking people off, knowing where he's going with the football. He's an extremely good athlete. They didn't run him, and they didn't need to run him much against Missouri State. But uh, I, I know um, just doing some research that, that uh, he can beat you with his feet as well as his arm. And so I know he's a young player. Um, but, uh, boy, I've been so impressed just um, with his, with his skill set. Cool. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Tell us. Tell us. Uh, Sebastian Taylor probably had his best game in the K-State uniform in week one. Is that something that you think he can sustain all season for you guys? Well, he needs to uh, for us to be successful. And we've seen that all through the summer and fall camp. You know, the practices that we've had, uh, limited or not, he's been the dominant guy in my mind uh, on a daily basis. And so um, we were confident that uh, Sebastian would have that kind of a game in, in and hopefully it gives him a lot of confidence, too, uh, that he is so much more comfortable, so much better year two in the system. He's stronger. <clears throat> he has really good speed. Um, he's, he has excellent hands. He runs good routes, and he's a big physical guy. And so uh, I was not surprised with his performance, uh, and I can't wait to see what he does the rest of the year. I was also curious, when you have a young quarterback who shows some talent like Will, is it tempting at all to try to sneak him in for a few snaps every game? You know, sure it is, uh, but we need to – he's no different than, than Deuce Vaughn that, uh, you know, you say you snuck him in for a few snaps. Deuce played more snaps than Will and had, had a lot of production, but Deuce needs that practice time. Will needs that practice time. Will needs to go against the first defense um, on, on consecutive days and go against them in third down and put him under some stress. And he was able to do that last week because Skyler didn't take very many reps. So Nick and Will took most of the reps with the ones and the twos. And I think it, I know it will make those two guys better uh, in, in the future because 
they were taking the lion's share of the reps, not, hey, Skyler takes eight and you guys each take two. They were taking uh, every bit of those reps. And so I know it's going to make them better um, now and in the future. Last one right here, uh, Scott Fritch. Yeah, hey, Chris. Um, this will be your first trip to Norman, obviously. Um, they use, typically have a pretty daunting atmosphere. I saw that in their opener, though, they only had 22,000 fans. How does that maybe play into things on Saturday? That's a good question. I've not been to, to Norman before. Uh, obviously, seen a bunch of games on, on television. Um, it, it's still a home field for them. It's still a home field advantage. Uh, the noise factor, you know, is it uh, – it's not going to be what it, what it typically is, but I'm sure uh, as tight as those sidelines are, that uh, the, the noise will be a factor and so something that we have to practice for. But uh, I, I think that's, that's going to be the, you know, kind of the interesting thing as you go across all these places and people come in here is what is the environment and how do your kids adjust to it, um, whether it's very little crowd to no crowd or, or to 22,000 in the, in the crowd noise that could come with that. So I think, you know, every week will be kind of a different uh, adventure there.